yourself together, man! Give me some ammo! Oh, I don't want to die! I thought you said Panama was going to be like a vacation! Get the fuck out of here! Let's go! Bye. Beep. Yeah, that looks like a point sixty-nine. Before we get into this video, guys, today's sponsor is the Elite U. The Elite U is a subscription-based video platform that provides raw, no-nonsense, realistic world skills so you can prevail in some bad situations. The instructors include Jack, a former Ranger Battalion guy, which I love to see. He was also SF, but we all know what really matters. The other instructor is Mike, who is a 5th degree BJJ black belt, where he brings his expertise to the combatives portions of the training. So you're really getting a broad spectrum of skills when it comes to what they'll teach you. So go check them out. The link's in the description, and big thank you to them for supporting this channel. But with that out of the way, guys, let's get into this video. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be going over my retro MIDI AR, joined by administrative results. What's up, man? I see now why you wear the blue pants and what I call you, the blue jean operator. Does it make my butt look big? It looks fantastic. Anyway, um, so today we're just going to be going over my retro MIDI, um, kind, of, kind of what led me to building this out. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I figured, you know, when it comes to carry handle guns, there's no better person to talk about that with than Larry, Larry Vickers here. We have a trip down memory lane for you today. <laughs> <laughs> you could be Larry Vickers underneath, underneath the, the balaclava. Yes, I'm like 40 years younger than Larry is. So I'll take that. You don't know that because you don't see what the face is. I've seen what the face is. That's true. Yeah, it's, it's horrifying, true. honestly. So I got this gun uh, a couple years ago and you know I ran it with the iron sights and everything else because this originally came as a Brownells XM177. Yeah. So as you can see here it doesn't have the brass deflector which you know, I don't really notice that much. I don't notice like the brass kind of kicking in a weird direction. It, you can kind of see it where some people it kind of kicks backwards a little bit but I shot this thing left handed and it doesn't hit me in the yeah, face. Um, but yeah it started off as XM177 and then I really, I shot at a few shooting competitions, seeing, you know, how difficult it is to be competitive with iron sights. Even though training with iron sights is a good thing, I think, it right. kind of yeah. uh, trains you like marksmanship and stuff like that. But I was like, man, how can I make this better? So I, do was, I was starting to do some research and I was thinking of various like, uh, you know, um, Black Hawk Down style, you know, the Gordon carbines and then I looked up, I was like, oh, there was a really cool one on Blood Diamond. And I literally Googled the like Blood Diamond rifle or something. And then your page, <laughs> I saw your page like referenced on Reddit or something like that of all places. Yeah, not, not Reddit. Come on. <laughs> this was back in like 2020, right okay. before COVID. Yeah. So it was probably, you know, like when you kind of first started, yeah, yeah, kind of get on the scene. That's when I did the build. It was like right at that COVID, like I think I finished it in like in February of 2020 and then COVID kicked off the same like month or two or whatever. Yeah, and then I remember you like burning toilet paper with a, smoking a cigar with a burning toilet paper. Oh yeah, I, I was a man <laughs> on a mission, and uh, as an agent of chaos. As I saw your, I saw your build, 
and I was like, man, so like you can actually, you know, do this. Like I, I kind of, I think I asked you a few questions like, Hey man, what's a, what's the mount that you put on your carry handle? Yeah. I'm probably, I probably came across as one of those annoying people. It's like, Hey, what goes into that build? No, it's, it's then, weird. Like, like the, <laughs> if you're a younger guy, uh, the retro knowledge is kind of lost on, mm -hmm. like I had to go through the whole, like, what the hell am I searching for? Because with a conventional AR, everything's flat top, you have everything ready to go, you can throw whatever optics or anything you want it to do on there. But with uh, you know the old style ARs, you're like, how? How do I do this? And so it kind of makes sense. And it's like, yeah. okay, I had to research and go to the old internet forums. Like, oh, well, you, son, you need a weaver mount. You need this uh, other. Essentially, everything came down to weaver stuff. So yeah, and like zip ties and like weird shit, like hose yeah. clamps. And yeah. I almost love that though. I think that's kind of what I like, just kind of like the uh jerry rigged nature of it you know yeah. like you know like very larry vickers <laughs> very liquors <laughs> <laughs> gonna go I like a strip club <laughs> very liquors <Larry> it's <laughs> like man it's a really slick <laughs> it's a really slick lap dance uh <laughs> vickers went to larry <laughs> very <laughs> liquors <laughs> at, at fort bragg north carolina <laughs> that's probably a place honestly the family channel damn it yeah, so going back to it, yeah, like you always see like the hose clamps, like dive lights and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess you could say like, mine's, mine's kind of like a mix of like modern and retro because I kind of wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to have like that retro vibe to it, but some things that kind of made more sense, like no one was really doing mid-length retro ARs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do I kind of like do, I don't want to just copy someone else's stuff. Cause like, you know, you have your, the blood diamond carbine is like your thing. You know, like if I just showed up with a blood it's diamond not, carbine. It's not my thing. I'm just. It is nerd. your thing. I'm a nerd for it. That's all it is. He's the one that made it popular other than, well, you. <laughs> well, Leonardo DiCaprio made it popular, but I'm just. Yeah, but you ran with it and, right. and made it a YouTube sensation. So I, I decided to kind of do my uh, separate, you know, I just went with a mid-length gas system on a retro rifle. Then I kind of went with this impact weapons components, um, you know, plastic hand guard kind of mount. I uh, can't remember the designation of this thing. Essentially, it just bolts down right to the plastic, uh, underneath this plastic here, almost kind of like M-Lock. But you have to take off this hand guard, put the little wings underneath this thing. It works out really good. Um, I've been running it like this for a long time. I might switch to a pressure pad, kind of like what you got going on. Yeah, I don't know, man. Pressure pad, I did, I did it for the, the clone aesthetic. But I truly, if you have a good tail cap, set up yeah it's like, that's that's pretty bomb -proof. and what i've found with pressure pads especially kind of going out to the airsoft events is that if that thing bumps up against like your sling goes across it wrong like the and, last and, weekend and, 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 I pressure and, pad, yeah. and um it's just it, without having the ability to turn off the light like having a switch on it yeah. where you can just turn off the what i ended up having to do is like putting like a like a cap on the end of the the uh, the light. Yeah. That way, I can flip that down yeah. in order to, in case I did like ND it, yeah. it wouldn't like be that big of a deal. I had to do. I did like the the vortex, one of the like the LPBO tail caps. Yeah. I put it on top of the light, and even still, if you're moving around with your kit, it may bump your shit, and then you can still ND your white light. Yeah, it's and, uh. You can't win around. Here. I've honestly started switching more towards just using the tail cap. Yeah. Um, you know, the pressure pad's easy to use, but with that ease of use is the added you know risk of <laughs> showing yourself in your entire squad yeah. um, and then you, <laughs> you just got killed, killed. <laughs> but moving on um you know i actually switched off the i kind of forgot to mention as far as like the front end here i swapped out the barrel so this gun came with like that standard i think it's like a 12 something inch uh xm 177 barrel mm -hmm. with that giant it was like a fake moderator yes. at the end those aren't real because like the original moderators were meant to change the report of the XM177 to make it sound more like a, I, think, I believe like an AK. So if you're like behind enemy lines in the bush and you start blasting, it better sound like an AK versus an AR. Right. And the ATF decided to classify those as suppressors. Why are you gay? No, I really do think the ATF was in the right on that one. I'm just, I'm just messing with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel this man. He's a fed. He's a fed. <laughs> yeah, but I swapped it out for just a BCM 14.5 barrel, and I pin welded this uh, A2 flash hider yeah. at the end here. You know, I might take this off. Some, so I have a gunsmith take that off or something and put uh, maybe a different, like, a surefire muzzle break or something like that if I want to mount suppressors and kind of go more modern with this thing. Yeah. But so far, I just I like this setup so far. Um, it's done pretty good. I used this at uh, the tactical, my first ever tactical games. I rocked this thing, and it did pretty good. Um, How did it stack up against the more modern rifles? 
the one drawback to these is uh, mounting magnified optics. So, yeah. you know, if you've seen my AK, it kind of runs into the same problem when you put a, like a standard, like magnified optic on it, you end up getting, you know, the chin weld. So like, <laughs> I haven't shot this in a while, honestly. And I was like, oh man, this is so, com it's really comfortable when under a dot, like when you're shooting, a but when you're trying to get your like head position for the eye relief, you know, you kind of need something solid to rest your cheek against. So if I was to try to mount an LPVO, not that you say you can't, it's just not optimal. It, right, you can, yeah, you can do it every one. It just may not be. Is it good? <laughs> like this is good for red dots. Um, and at the tactical games, a lot of those targets are so far out there mm -hmm. that you kind of need an LPVO. You're kind of you're like falling behind because all the other guys are probably rocking LPVOs. Oh yeah. yeah, everyone's rocking LPVOs, um, you know, modern ARs and like staccatos. And I ran this in the Beretta, which the Beretta I think was a great pistol to use at that. Um, I love retro gear, but LPVO, man, like I, LPVOs are where it's at for me, man. Like, that's, that's what I throw on like a, a, a duty grade rifle. Yeah. But, um, like the actually being able to see what you're shooting at makes a big difference, you know, yeah. like, especially for like target ID, you know, like even out when we went out there for air, sometimes I kind of like wish we were using LPVOs on our airsoft guns, just yeah. cause you could see which color uniform that you're shooting at. It's like, just to make sure, cause we were both running dots and actually you yeah. ran a very similar setup to this. I did. I pretty much ran the, uh, XM like, <laughs> it was an XM-177 airsoft gun and I just swapped out with like a 14.5 barrel and kind of like the Black Hawk down gun. It was like um, almost exactly. It was just yeah, wasn't mid length. <laughs> yeah, right. But it, 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 we're, yeah, we're going we're going down the uh, the nerd rabbit hole. But yeah, it was uh, just essentially the same setup. Ran under nods. I had dual tubes. Which that was great for, right? Yeah, this this high mounted optic. Yeah, because I could passive aim. Because there's a bunch of other airsoft airsofters out there running around with nods too, and they're trying to figure out who you are and paint you with IR light or white light. So by not giving your signature away, you can kind of do your force on force through passive aiming, which was pretty sick. But yeah, this high mounted optic yeah, getting high, behind it. It was it was clutch. I just extended the stock all the way and would just passively aim on like the lowest setting on the dot, and it was just it was pretty cash money. Yeah, but yeah. And the magnification would, be, would have been great because a lot of those guys kind of stick in the shadows in those buildings, so it's not like they're they're contrasting colors illuminated. So, yeah, so you're nice. saying like this setup maybe with like an illuminator instead of like a, maybe something like an illuminator on here would actually be a nice like nighttime fighting like I, night vision rifle i think so maybe some like you could probably do like the, the what is it the dual heads oh yeah like either the flashlight with a dual ir and, and white light or you have both flashlights so you can have like just they're both good at the job and i kind of go like the m57 firing device route and put like a dd rail on this thing oh. and just put a straight up fucking peck on it yeah, that's, <laughs> that's also an option i mean i don't see why not I don't really worry about the reliability of mounting an, an IR to, like laser to the, the plastic hand guard. That's my There's a reason. way to do it. I've I think it clamps that, yeah. down to the barrel yeah. and then and then ends up running up here, okay. which I've heard is solid. I think it's something they used to do back in the day. Yeah. Um, I've, I think I've seen Lucas I, I, honestly I, I post about I, the, the Delta guys are hearing us talk like this and they're like, yeah, we did that back in the 90s. You know what I mean? They're probably like, we just zip tied it. <laughs> we, we, had, we had dual tubes and carry handle red dots back in the 90s. And you're like, okay. Yeah, but it's like we're rediscovering all of this stuff as young men in 2022. Right, it's and like <laughs> we, we are from the, we are we are like born in the wrong era. So that's essentially what's going on. Yeah, especially in the kit kind of what we're wearing today right, too. With the retro kit going on. So what is that vest that you got going uh, this on? This is the oh my god, I'm totally blank right now. It's a, it's a Black Hawk vest. So I bought this essentially because of Blood Diamond. Um, yeah. According to their props department, this Black Hawk vest was kosher for the screen use. Kosher Black Hawk, uh, Black Hawk, or <laughs> Blood Diamond rig right, right here. So this is how deep the rabbit hole goes. <laughs> it's, don't do, don't do clone stuff. It's not good for you. For your wallet. For your wallet. Yeah, I'm just wearing the Alice kit, and uh, those that actually seems like that was probably made in the '90s, I right would around say, this. This feels like it's like '90s to like early 2000s tech. Really I love nice. it though. Yeah. And how many mags does it hold? Dude, I can. I was easily fitting here. Let me see. I got two in there. We'll find out. You probably hit, you can fit three. You can triple stack these things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me see some mags. Can, oh yeah. I know I can easily triple stack. I wonder if I can quad stack these mugs. Oh, you probably could. Holy crap! <laughs> you probably could. So that is called sustainment right there. No. <laughs> quad stack mags. You can fit what 16, eight, 16 mags 16 in that rig. Now you want to win a gunfight? Cause I got ammo. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, dude. 
Well, yeah, I was just wearing the Alice kit because it kind of fit like this whole retro vibe that we got going on today. Right, yeah, it fits and the aesthetic, the, 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 the showbiz that is YouTube, so I <laughs> yeah. go. But uh, yeah, uh, I love running kind of like these retro stuff. I kind of want to get back into it, um, get some more kind of retro style rifles. Mm -hmm. Um, in even older, you know, like yeah. I wouldn't be opposed to like getting some like cowboy guns mm -hmm. and like running those. Like I would, I would be, I wouldn't be opposed to getting like maybe a, a halberd of some kind, going really retro. Oh yeah, practicing our medieval hand-to-hand -hand combat. But hey, you know what? That's crossbow and longbow. Oh yeah, I think I'd be more of a longbow guy personally. Oh, you know what I mean, yeah. I do have to lift, but those sometimes those draw weights get pretty heavy. So yeah, you, you're built for it, bro. That's about it, guys. Thank you for joining me on the channel, bro. Um, yeah, I love you having you down here. I need to come out to Arizona soon, and we can. Uh, I love you. I mean, I love being down here. Yeah, I, I love you too. We spent a nice weekend. We spent a nice weekend at a cute little Airbnb while we uh, did pretty, the big LARP. It was pretty romantic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, guys. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Gene Operator. You can follow him, I'm sure you know, at Administrative Results or uh, Executive Outcomes. Wait a second. <laughs> but that's all I got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to Blue Gene. <laughs>